Hey, what's up? It's Digital Introspect. You can also see Maya in the background working there. Um, I wanted to make this quick video showing you my current VJ setup. I made a video recently that was kind of an introduction to what VJing is and my overall process. This video will focus more specifically on my project file for performing my visuals in a live concert setting. I'm doing this to connect more personally with my audience, make new professional contacts, share knowledge with new or aspiring VJs, and offer a different perspective to other VJs. Also, I'd love to hear about your current setup as well. Everyone has their own approach, so let's wiggle. Right now I'm using Resolum. Resolume is a real-time media playback engine. This is where I load my pre-rendered clips and map them to be playable in a live concert setting. I'm using this custom MIDI controller that I got from Yeltex to control everything. You can see my Resolum project moving back here. I only use one deck. I've tried multiple decks. I always end up wanting something from another deck in just a few seconds, so that doesn't really work out for me. Using one deck can be bad because if you crash, then you have to wait for all your clips to reload before you can play any content. But hey, we're all just surfing on the edge of chaos anyway. I use five layers total. You can see the layers stacked on top of each other. So this is on the very top. This down here is on the very bottom. Um, I mostly use my top layer to import real-time effects from Touch Designer, but I'll get to that a little later. I set my files up into columns. Uh, I set, kind of arrange them in ways that I know they'll uh, play well together. So here I'll fire off this column right here, column five. So. Aside from this first layer, which is from Touch Designer, we have all of our clips stacked on top of each other here. I do this to kind of make a skeleton of my project. I know where everything is at this way. I can quickly scroll to get to the column I want. Also, if I ever don't know what to do, I'll just trigger the next column on the beat. All right, so I changed the angle here so you can see my controller. This is actually mapped using OSC from Touch Designer, but everything I'm doing here could be MIDI mapped directly into Resolume. You can see I have this knob here. This is set up to scroll through my columns. So since I'm only using one deck, I can scroll quickly through this deck, find whatever I'm looking for. Let's go back to the T-Rex column because it's fun. So you can see the, the five different layers. I have these mapped to these first five faders here. This is just layer one. I'm going to fade up layer two, fade up layer three, fade up layer four, and fade up layer five. Now that's all five layers up. All right. This second knob here, this controls the speed of everything. So in the live setting, I can speed this up or slow it way down. This knob right here is set to a mirror effect. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this layer to an effect, and then the layer underneath that, the knob underneath that, I'll have it control a parameter of that effect. Since these are encoders with push buttons, I can just quickly turn this effect off. So here we go to the, um, the second knob on the second layer. This one is set to be a wave warp. Same thing where the knob underneath it controls a parameter in the wave warp so I can make it more intense if I need to. Then this third knob here, this is a tunnel effect that only affects the bottom layers. So yeah. I'll get rid of these so you can see it a little better. Then the same thing, the knob underneath it controls the parameter of the tunnel effect. The arcade buttons are fun. They're momentary effects. All these effects are built into t uh, Resolume, by the way. But you can see I can drum these arcade buttons. I could also hold it down if I wanted to, but I, and I will sometimes, but I typically just drum these to the beat. On the black ones, I have more intense effects that I use less often, like a strobe in black. I have an invert. Actually, these two aren't doing anything yet. I'm not totally done with this project file. I'm still working on it. My plan is to have it completely finished before the UNS Festival. 
All right, now we were talking about those columns earlier and the column changes. I changed columns using these two buttons. I can move forward a column. <coughs> that was a less obvious column change, but this one you'll notice. Here we go. One, two, three. So I can change columns forwards or backwards. Now everything about this project file pretty much changes when it's live. I mean, I set up a basic skeleton here, but very often I will actually switch these up while performing live. Because I'll realize, oh hey, I want to transition to something else next. Um, I'm just going to grab this, put it into this column, and then I can change just that clip on that layer. So often I will mix these up during a live performance, and then I'll just try to remember not to save it. So I get my original skeleton back next time. These two buttons right here are forward and reverse. So I can kind of drum these and keep a clip in place for a minute, wait for the beat to drop, and then let it play. I'll give you a real quick demonstration of how this all works. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, please, uh, I'd love to see your project file set up as well. Maybe we can all learn something from each other. Thanks so much for tuning in. Peace.